In this tutorial, I will be exploring the grain and formant oscillator modes, and these are presented in four types. Grain simple, grain complex, formant simple, and formant complex. All of these modes employ granular synthesis techniques, which are normally associated with sample mangling tools. But in the virus TI, we use a special implementation of this technology, which allows you to manipulate the formants of the wavetables. Now, since all of these oscillator modes are based upon the wavetables, I'd recommend that you watch the wavetable tutorial first, as I won't be explaining the basic functionality of the wavetable oscillators in this tutorial. So let's start with the grain complex oscillator. You'll notice that as soon as I select this mode, that some new parameters become available. These are formant shift, formant spread, and detune. Formant shift allows you to transpose the formants of the wavetable in semitones. And let's have a listen to how that affects the sine wavetable. Now with very simple waves that don't have many harmonics, uh, in the case of the sine wave of course we have no harmonics, uh, you won't find there's much action below the zero point for formant shift. You'll get more of a filtering effect in fact. So let's see how it affects a brighter wave now. So the effect is rather like oscillator sync, although the effect of formant shift has a much smoother sound than traditional oscillator sync does. Listen now as I uh, mess around with the index. So you can get some almost vocoder-like effects there with uh, higher settings of formant shift. Um, and still that dynamic movement uh, that you expect from wavetables. And you'll hear that in all but the most extreme settings of formant shift. Now formant spread splits the formants and sends them in opposite directions. So you can hear there there's uh, still a kind of oscillator sync effect and also something like a sub oscillator as well. And with some um, modulation of this you can sometimes make it sound a little bit kind of vocal as well. The detune parameter can be used to create a slight pitch offset between the formants. And to get the best results from this it's best to keep the formants very close to each other. So turn formant spread either very low or off altogether if you want the kind of detuning that you expect. And as you can hear, the pitch appears to drop by an octave when you in uh, introduce detuning. And so to compensate for that, either play an octave higher or adjust the semitone parameter accordingly. Now the formant complex oscillator has an identical parameter set to the grain complex. And it's based upon the same techniques. But there is a very critical difference in that the formants are fixed right across the keyboard, whereas they are key tracked in the grain oscillators. And this makes a surprisingly big difference to the character of the sound. Now the resulting effect is essentially the same as running the wavetable oscillator through an array of one-pole bandpass filters, with the number of uh, filters being the same as the number of harmonics in the wave. So the effect of this is most apparent on the brightest sounding waveforms. Let's actually select an even brighter one now. Um, let's go to Kling Clang. Now listen as I play up and down the keys. Let's turn the detune off for a sec. Now you can hear as I got to the, the lower end of the keyboard there that the pitch became less distinct, and that's because the formants are stuck here. Um, at, well, they were just in B natural there, actually. Um, but uh, yeah, f formant shift when it's tuned to plus zero is actually pitched at middle C. So if you want the lower sounding notes to be more distinct, then you need to adjust a formant shift down accordingly like this. And I'll play the same sort of range. <laughs> So 
So uh, the Foreman Complex Oscillator is a fantastic tool for creating really kind of biting leads. And w what you can do is fine-tune the Foreman Shift parameter to uh, get the sound to really cut through the mix like a knife. And to get the most out of this oscillator, I'd recommend that you avoid modulating form and shift, as this tends to dilute the effect of the static formants. A very slow monophonic LFO, um, or maybe a you know, slow mod wheel sweep or something like that, will be fine, um, especially because it affects all the voices at once. Um, but if you start modulating the, them quite intensely, then you'll find that it'll be hard to tell the difference between this and the grain complex oscillator. Now you'll have noticed that we also have a simple version of both the grain uh, and formant oscillators. In these modes, the only additional parameter to those of the standard wavetable oscillator is formant shift. And in the formant simple oscillators, you can uh, clearly hear the static formant still. Uh, there's not, the sound isn't quite as rich or as biting as the uh, formant complex oscillator, but there are some advantages. Uh, even at the most extreme settings of formant shift, you can still hear a fundamental there. And uh, also, they're a lot less taxing on the DSP than um, the complex oscillators, so you'll achieve a much higher polyphony with the simple modes. So let's have a quick listen now to a selection of sounds which make use of these modes. First is uh, a lead sound. It uses a very sharp attack, uh, which is uh, sweeping the formant shift uh, with the filter envelope at the start of each note. I've also uh, assigned formant shift to the aftertouch parameter there. This next patch is uh, quite unusual, but I think it's quite useful for highlighting the difference between how a patch can sound in uh, these oscillators compared to the standard wavetables. Now let's try it in the standard wavetable. And you can hear that, that all that kind of squeaky uh, sound, uh, character at the beginning of the sound is gone now. Um, whereas a lot of the harmonics are still present. And so it's a very useful sound design tool for just uh, adding extra dimensions to the wavetables. This next sound uses a combination of a, a formant simple and formant complex oscillators. And finally, this patch uses uh, some more complex modulation. Let's have a look. Yeah, I'm modulating formant spread with LFO1 quite slowly. A little bit of modulation of wavetable index as well. Check my mod matrix there. Um, yes, even deeper modulation of formant spread there because I've got it doubled. Um, but that's essentially it. And we're using just one formant complex oscillator. <laughs> Compare that to the wavetable. You can hear that in the formant complex oscillator, there's a lot more richness to the sound. <laughs> 